Hi everyone, this is Lynn Kaplan coming to you from Southwest Florida with my review of the 2024 National Mahjong League card. Was it just my imagination or did 2023 seem to fly by in the blink of an eye? It's hard to believe that it's time for me to review the new 2024 card. My initial impression is that I find this card to be creative with lots of interesting options and patterns to play. Please remember that this review is geared to beginners. I will go over each individual hand and point out many helpful hints. You can request a copy of my written notes that go along with this video by emailing Lynn Kaplan, that's L-Y-N-N, K A P as in Paul L A N 38 at gmail.com. And I will be repeating that at the end of this video so that you have it. As I have said in the past, since I am using the National Mahjong League card for teaching purposes, there is no need to report me to the Mahjong police. With all that being said, let's get started. I am going to point out some very specific things right up front that I get a lot of questions on from beginners. I want you all to please remember that the colors on the card simply reflect the number of suits required for that particular hand. It's, it's always been a pet peeve of mine that the league uses the colors green and red since novice players have a tendency to think that the green represents our bams and that the red represents our cracks. No, just remember, one color equals any one suit, two colors equals any two suits, and three colors equals any three suits. In other words, the color on the card does not dictate suit, okay? I also wanna cover some definitions. A single is one tile, no jokers allowed. A pair is two like tiles, no jokers allowed. Pong, which is a set of three like tiles, you can use as many jokers as you want in a pong. These could all be jokers, or you could have one or two. In a Kong, it is four like tiles. Again, as many jokers as you want in a Kong. A quint is five like tiles, and of course we would have to add a joker in order to make a quint, and you could use as many jokers as you wanted in a quint. There are no sextets on this year's card. I also want to point out that in when you make the 2024 or the news, those are not considered Kongs, and I am going to mention that numerous times throughout this review. When we make the 2024, which is in this last hand in the 2024 category, you cannot use jokers. Those are considered single tiles. That's not a bona fide Kong. A Kong is four like numbers. Another example would be for news. In news here, you cannot use jokers. Those are single tiles. Okay, let's get started on the new card. The first category is 2024. The first hand I've already made, okay? We've got a pung of twos, a pung of soaps, a kong of twos, and a kong of fours, okay? The common pattern this year is pung pung, kong kong. In other words, three, three, four, four. This is what I consider a very nice, easy, callable hand um, because there's no singles or pairs. So you can call everything for an exposure as long as you're playing an exposed hand, which this one is. 
Um, just as a friendly reminder, the only tile in Mahjong that acts as a zero is the white dragon, also known as the soap. Okay, when it is used as a zero, it can be used with any suit. Some beginners think that, you know, since that is the dragon that goes with dots, that that would have to be, uh, the 2024 would have to be uh, in dots. No, it can be in any suit. Even if you look at the top of your Mahjong card, it says white dragon is used as zero. It may be used with any suit. So that is the first hand, like I said, a very nice pong pong, kong kong, or three, three, four, four. Let's go to the second hand, okay? First of all, we have four flowers, okay? And please remember, with flowers, the numbers and the uh, seasons mean nothing. A flower is a flower. Just like, you know, remember Romeo and, Romeo and Juliet, a, a, a name by any other name is, you know, a rose by any other na name is still a rose. Same with flowers. It's, they're just flowers. Okay? So in this hand, let's just keep these twos up here because we need four of them. Then it calls for, let's just throw a joker in there. It calls for four soaps. And then this is a hand with any two suits. Okay. Now, remember, this is the suit of cracks, okay? This is non-suited when this is just the soaps. You know, the dragons, when they act as zeros, you don't worry about the suit. So I am going to pick BAMs for the 24. This also could have been in dots. This also could be two four in dots, and you still have two suits, okay? So this is our first hand with a Kong of Flowers. Uh, my recommendation on this hand is that you want to try to have at least the two or the four for the pair by the end of the Charleston, since you cannot use a joker with a pair. Now, needless to say, twos and fours are going to be very popular this year since we are now playing on the 2024 card. And I mention that because, you know, year tiles is something that you want to try to prevent passing in the Charleston, okay? Listen, sometimes you, have, you do have to, you know, pass twos and fours and flowers, you know, what we consider risky tiles. It's going to happen. But if you have a choice, let's say between a three and a four or a two, pass the three. Okay, Okay. so now we're on hand number three in the 2024 category. And I have two flowers, 2024. And since the card says that the Kongs can be twos or fours, I've made this hand using fours that you, so that you can see the other example, okay? You need to remember that the Kongs have to match in the same number. They can either be all twos or all, or all fours. So in other words, you cannot have one Kong of twos and the other Kong of fours. So, in this particular hand, I would certainly want to try to have a good portion of that 2024 since you cannot use jokers. These are considered single tiles and you can never use a joker as a single tile. Okay, Let's go to the last hand in 2024, which is a concealed hand. You know, concealed hands, they have a higher value because there's a higher level of difficulty. You know, some beginners don't like to play concealed hands right off the bat because they're sitting there and, you know, you watch your tiles go by as they're being discarded and you can't call them. Um, this particular concealed hand starts with two Norse, three East, the 2024, 
three west, also known as a pung, and two cells. Okay. So where can we use jokers in this hand? No, yes, no, yes, no. Okay. So like I said, since it's a concealed hand, be careful that you do not call for an exposure. You can, of course, call for your 14th tile if that gives you mahjong. So in other words, let's say you're playing this hand and all you need is one more West. And someone discards says West, you say mahjong and you put it on your rack and put up your other tiles. Um, I believe this is a 30 cent hand because it's concealed, has two pairs Plus, you've got the 2024 that you cannot call for an exposure unless the tile, like I said, that you're calling gives you mahjong. And again, I'm just going to remind you that the 2024 can be in any suit. It does not have to be made in the suit of dots. So I could have made this, you know, with bams if I wanted to. The soap is used as a zero and can be used with any suit. I have a few notes that I made regarding the 2024 category. I want to point out that like number Kongs appear in two other categories. So when they refer to like Kongs in the same number, in hand number three in 2024, those are light Kongs. They also appear light Kongs down in the any like number category. Those are light Kongs, same number, set of four. One other hand that has light Kongs is in consecutive run hand number three. Those will be the same number Kongs, but in different suits. Why do I point this out? It's important to remember if one of your opponents exposes two Kongs in the same number, you can try to figure out what hand they are playing and play defensively, okay? Something else uh, I wanna mention that if someone exposes four soaps, let me, let me set this up for you. If someone exposes four soaps, and four twos, okay. The only hand that they can be playing is the number two hand in the 2022 category. So again, I mention this because, you know, playing strategy in Mahjong is very, very important. So if you can attempt to figure out your opponent's hand, um, it will caution you as to tiles that you should not throw to give them mahjong. Now, if someone were to expose four flowers and four soaps, they could be playing either the number two hand, this hand right here in 2024 that we just made, or they could be playing the number two hand in Winds and Dragons, which we will eventually get to, okay? Because look, there's four flowers and there's four dragons. Again, it just helps you to be a defensive player. Uh, just as a note, we have six hands this year with Kongs of Flowers, and I will mention them later on. Um, jokers may only be used in groups of three or more like tiles. So in other words, if you have a pung, this is a pung of three light tiles, they all match, as many jokers as you want. Same if this was a kong, as many jokers as you want. If this was, you know, if you were playing in quince, okay, you could use as many jokers as you wanted. But when you make 2024, the 2024, or you make news, no jokers are allowed. 
Uh, zeros and flowers are suitless, so it's customary that their color always appear as blue on the card. So you can see here, because those are considered non-suited tiles, so they always just show up in blue. Okay, let's go to the 2468 category now. This is our even number, so after the Charleston, if you have a lot of even tiles, this is the category that you would play. The first hand can be made in one suit or two suits, exact numbers as they appear. This is our friendly Pong Pong Kong Kong, and I will go ahead and make that a Pong of twos, a Pong of fours, and then we have sixes and eights. Okay, this is a great hand to play. Like I said, if you end up with a lot of even tiles after the Charleston. Okay, so this I made it in two suits, or you can make it in one. Um, Again, this is a nice, easy hand because everything is callable. What do I mean by callable? If you're playing this hand and you have, let's say, two two bams in your rack and someone discards a two bam, call, you pick up the tile, put it on top of your rack and make your exposure. That's what I call a callable hand. Okay, let's go to the next hand. Well, let me see if I have any, oh, okay. So this hand we have, let's just shift some things over to try and save some time. We have fours. This is three suits. So we know we need to have our bams, cracks, and dots. Okay. Two, four, four, six, eight three different suits. I would certainly try to have a good part of my pairs at the end of the Charleston, since that's the most difficult part of this hand. Okay, let's move along. Third hand. Well, we see one color, so we, knew, we know we just have to concern ourselves with one suit. One color equals one suit. And this is where you need to know your matching dragon. So we've got two, four, six, eight. And our matching dragon for BAMs is green. Throw a joker in there, okay? Two, four, six, eight, pair, pair, pong, pong, with a Kong of like dragons. Okay. Um, I just want to remind you that the league posts on the back of the card matching dragons. So if you're playing and if you're uncertain of what the matching dragon is, just, just take a glance back here. I know some beginners actually will highlight that area if they have to refer back to it. Okay. Next hand in two, four, six, eight. Well, we have multiplication. I was never really good at multiplication, to tell you the truth. And I'm not real fond of these multiplication hands. But if the tiles, you know, I always say, if the tiles speak to me and I have those tiles, especially if I start out with a bunch of flowers, I would definitely look in this category. So I am going to make this first hand in two, four, six, eight, fourth hand down. We have three colors, so we need three suits, okay? So I'm going to use BAMs, I'm going to use dots for the sixes, I'll use a joker, and that 24 has to be in what suit? Cracks, that's our third suit, okay? Kong of flowers, as many jokers as you want. Kong of fours, as many jokers as you want. My six is in a second suit, as many jokers as you want. 24, no jokers. That is a, that is a pair of tiles. Okay. You can also make this hand six times eight equals 48. 
okay? Just remember, the most important thing with that, with this particular hand, is that it's three suits. So again, if you start out with a bunch of flowers and have these numbers, go for it. But just be mindful of the pair since no jokers are allowed. Next hand, okay, pair of flowers, twos and fours, sixes and eights. You can do it in one suit or two suits. Let's make this hand in two suits, okay? So we're going to use, let's go to something different. Let's use some two dots. We're making this hand right here. Okay, I'll throw in a joker. Now I have a pair of fours and a pair of sixes. Can I use jokers? No, the answer is no, you cannot. Now, I just realized that's a different color. What does that mean? I need a different suit. So, I cannot use dots. I will use cracks. And I will use the third suit needs to be in the same suit as my twos because it's the same color. So this Kong has to be eight dots. Okay. So there's that hand. Pair of flowers, my twos and eights match in the same suit. Fours and sixes in the same suit. No jokers, no jokers, no jokers. As many as you want, as many as you want. I'm surprised that this is only a 25 cent hand and not a 30 cent hand since there are three pairs in this hand. You know, my advice is always is to be sure you have a good majority of those pairs before selecting this hand to play. Last hand in two, four, six, eight. It's concealed. The two fours and sixes are all in the same suit. So what does that mean? It all, or in the same color, it all has to be in the same suit. Okay. So two, four, six, same suit. Got to take those eight dots away because those eights are in two other colors. So what are my other two suits? Cracks and bams. This is a very difficult hand, I have to admit. This is gonna be a challenge. First of all, it's concealed, and secondly, it has three pairs. One, actually, it has, did I make it correctly? Just bear with me. Oh, I need another two here. Two, four, six, eight, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Every hand in Mahjong consists of 14 tiles. Okay, so I forgot a two. Pair of flowers, pung of twos. <clears throat> Pair of fours, pung of sixes. And then eights. They have to be eights. Sometimes I'll get asked, well, Lynn, since I'm in the two, four, six, eight category, could they be two, four, sixes? No, if they could be, the league would have written that out here in the verbiage. And I'm going to mention this. It is so important that when you're playing a hand to read the verbiage, okay? Up here in this third hand in 2024, that verbiage is very important because those Kongs, they don't have to be twos. They could be fours. So be sure you read the verbiage. Okay. So I think that we are finished with the two, four, six, eight category. Let's go to any like numbers. Any like numbers, I love this year because all of the hands are open. Remember last year, the last hand was concealed. Well, this year, all of the hands are now open. So you can call for everything. All right, that first hand. Now, what does it mean, any like number? It means that you can use any number that you want, but remember, they have to match in the hand. So I'm going to make this first hand in a different number than ones. I think I will use fours, okay? So let's make that hand in fours. A pung in one suit. 
Now they want a Kong in a second suit. And the third Pung has to be in the third suit. Well, I've used cracks. I've used dots. My third suit, go ahead and say it, <laughs> BAMs. Okay. So you see, you can make these hands in any number that you want, but the number has to match. In other words, if I had four here and fives here and sixes here, no, that you would be declared your hand is dead, okay? So that's that hand. This is a great hand to play. You've got a Kong, a Pung, a Kong, and a Pung. Everything is callable. As many jokers as you want in all of those melds. Next hand gets a little bit more interesting. First of all, we do not need flowers. Let's just keep our fours up there, but we just need a pair with matching dragons. What dragon goes with cracks? Red, okay? How do I remember that red goes with cracks? Well, first of all, the predominant color on cracks is red. And I remember when I first started teaching, I would say, well, Think of like cracks on the sidewalk, and if you fall on a sidewalk, you're gonna start bleeding, and what color is red? <laughs> so anyway, remember it however you can, and as always, if you can't remember, switch to the back of the card. All right, so requiring a pung of matching dragons. Okay, our next fours, pair of fours, requires a pung of matching dragons, that would be our soaps, okay? Again, I'll use a joker. And then we need another kong of fours in the third suit, which would be bams. We've got cracks, we've got dots, our third suit is bams. No jokers, no jokers. As many jokers as you want, here, here, and here. Again, please remember, the numbers have to match. They have to be like, okay? Like means same. The last hand does not require our uh, dragon, so we'll put those back. Gee, it was so neat when I first started, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, well. Okay, this last hand has a pair of flowers. And then we're gonna just use fours again since that seems to be right close by to me. And news, this is our, I think this is our first of two news hands. And we need an east, west, and south. And then we have a different color, but it has to be the same number. We'll just go back to our BAMs. Okay, flower, flower, Kong of four cracks, news, northeast, west, south, and then a Kong of fours in a different suit. Okay. No jokers, no jokers here. These are single tiles. You only have one north and one east. The only way this would be a, a bonafide Kong is if this was like four north or four east, okay? These are single tiles, no jokers. The notes that I have for the any like numbers um, category is that the exposed like pungs in this hand, you also have exposed pungs in the number six hand under consecutive run, and in the number two hand and the number four hand in the 369 category. Now, again, why is that important? If an opponent exposes two sets of pawns, you can try to figure out what hand they are playing. So again, there are three hands that have exposed like pungs. It would be in this number one hand in any like numbers, this number six hand in under consecutive run, and in the number two hand in three, six, nine, 
and also the number four hand in the 369 category. There are two hands on this year's card with exposed dragon pongs. That's in this number two hand that we just discussed in any like numbers, and also the number two hand in Winds and Dragons. So if a player has two pongs of dragons exposed, you can really narrow it down as to which hand they are possibly playing. Okay. So that has to do with exposed dragon pongs. It's either gonna be that like number hand or they're playing winds and dragons. Um, the other news hand, uh, if besides any like numbers, you're gonna find in win, well, Winds and Dragons, and we'll get there in a bit. Okay. And like I mentioned before, what I like that now, this third hand is exposed, it's not concealed. Now, again, I'm going to mention, just because, you know, this pong of Ds are in green and the other pong of Ds are in red, it does not mean it requires green dragons and red dragons. If the hand requires red dragons, it will be designated as an R. If green dragons are required, it will be indicated by a G, okay? So please, please, please keep that in mind uh, when you're playing. Uh, please remember that you can use any like number. It's not just ones but just be sure that you use the same number in the hand. In other words, you can't use like twos and threes, you know, fours and sixes. They have to be the exact same number for the melds, okay? All right, so we're now doing the addition hands, lucky sevens. I've made this hand with a pair of flowers, a kong of ones, a kong of sixes, and a kong of sevens all in one suit. Okay. It must be these numbers, okay? That's why this category is called Lucky Sevens. All of these numbers add to seven, but it has to be those numbers, either one plus six, two plus five, or three plus four, and all in one suit. You know, these math categories have a tendency to be overlooked. Uh, to be honest, I'm not a big fan but if during the Charleston you have a bunch of, you know, matching sevens and a pair of flowers, I would definitely check this category out. Okay. Let's go on to quince. Okay, some very, very interesting uh, quint hands this year. The first one is a pair of flowers and then it says any three consecutive numbers. So I don't wanna copy the card. I wanna give you all another example that you can do. So my numbers are going to be six, se six seven, eight. Here's my eights. And we'll just throw up some more jokers. Isn't it wonderful when we get jokers, our favorite? So here we are, a pair of flowers. I have a quint of sixes, my pair of sevens, and a quint of eights. Any three consecutive numbers. That's why, again, it's important to read the verbiage. You could have five, six, seven, okay? One suit. Now, if I'm playing a similar hand in the consecutive run category, let's say if I'm playing down here where it calls for three consecutive numbers in one suit, and you know, if I'm playing that hand and I start pulling in a lot of jokers, I'm gonna switch up to this quint hand. Okay. I'll especially do that if I have this pair because as we know, that's the toughest part of any, uh, any hand in Mahjong to get. Okay, second queen hand. This is just one of the most interesting hands on this year's card. 
It's any two suits, quince, any two non-matching numbers, and any wind. So I'm just going to leave those sixes up there. I know I can't use the eight cracks because it has to be a different suit and a different number. So I could use fours. It's any two non-matching numbers. So these can be any numbers, as long as they don't match, in two different suits. And this Kong of wind can be any wind. So I'm just going to use, I'm going to say that during the Charleston, I ended up with a lot of cells. So there you go. That's the second Quinn hand. Any wind, and it's a calm. Any two not, not non-matching numbers, I've got sixes and fours in two different suits. I love this hand. I have a feeling I'm gonna be playing that hand a lot as long as I get jokers, if I'm lucky enough. Okay, let's go to the third Quinn hand. Any two suits, any two consecutive numbers. Okay, well, I'll just leave a pair of sixes up there and look around for my sevens, and I need a quint of sevens. So you know what? Since I don't see them around where I am, I'm just gonna use a bunch of jokers. Now, the second set is in a different color. What does that mean? I need to use a different suit. So I'll use bams. Six, seven, six, seven in two different suits. I've got cracks and I've got bams. So, you know, if I'm playing the last hand in the consecutive run category, let's say I'm playing this hand down here, it's two consecutive numbers, right? Or, and I start getting a lot of jokers, I will switch to this quint hand that I'm showing you here. But that's just how I just want you to know that, you know, always keep in mind your options, especially when you get jokers in. And like, this is a concealed hand, and this up here is an exposed hand, and I'm getting jokers in, I will definitely switch to that quint hand. Um, just be sure, like I said before, that the quint numbers are in two different suits. I apologize. Um, that was on the that was on the hand before. Uh, the diff the most difficult part of this hand are your pairs. Okay, so mm, try to get a good majority of those pairs up front. Okay, let's go to the fourth hand in quints. Well, I see we have our first quint of flowers. This is actually the first hand that requires a quint of flowers. And then, please remember what I said. Just because those Ds are in green does not mean it requires the green dragon. The dragon just has to be the opposite of whatever your number is. So in this particular case, since they're right in front of me, my number that I'm going to use is seven cracks, okay? and that's a quint. So for the dragon, what dragon could I use? Not the red, because red goes with cracks. So the only dragons that I could use are either the green or the dragon that goes with dots, which is the soap, okay? So playing this hand, if I have cracks here, my dragons could be soap or greens. Let's play make-believe. Let's say these were in bams, okay? Now I know I can't use the, the, the green dragon. It would have to either be the red dragon or the soap. It just, it's two suits. Again, reason why you need to know your matching dragons, okay? Let's see, what do I have to say about this hand? Um, 
you have to, like I said, it had to be the two different suits. Um, you know, if you use dragons that match the suit of your number, your hand will be declared dead, so be careful. Um, oh, the one thing that's interesting about this hand that I realized is that you really only need one joker to make this hand. And that's because this, first of all, is a Kong of Dragons, right? So you could have those all natural. You have five flowers, but how many flowers are in a set of Mahjong? Eight, so you could actually have all natural flowers. This is the only place where you would actually need a joker is this quint because as you know, there are only four of each number in the game of Mahjong. So I just find that interesting. You actually only need to have one joker to make that, to make that ham. Um, needless to say, you know, if you open with a few jokers, be sure to check out the quint category. Um, if you're playing a different hand and you start pulling in a lot of jokers, try to switch to a quint ham. Um, uh, just as a note, the, the only other hand requiring a quint of flowers is the number six hand in consecutive run. So if someone exposes a quint of flowers, you can really narrow down because there's only two hands on this year's card that require a quint of flowers. All right, let's go to consecutive runs. Lots and lots of options this year on consecutive runs. Um, as always, you know, we have the same numbers for the first two hands, meaning one and two, but they just switch up the configuration. The, the, the pattern has changed. I think last year we had pairs on the ends. This year we've got pungs on the ends. I'm not even gonna make those hands, okay? It's one suit and these numbers only. Let's go to the second hand. On this particular hand, it's any four consecutive numbers in any one suit, but the dragon has to be opposite the suit. Okay? So I think, let's see, let's do five, six, seven, Okay, help me find my eight cracks, thank you. So, I use cracks, five, six, seven, eight. Who can tell me what that dragon cannot be? Let's start there. It cannot be the red dragon, because if you use the red dragon, you would only have one suit, okay? We have to have two suits. So that dragon, what are the other dragons other than reds? Green and soap. Okay, so I could have four soaps here, or I could use the green dragon here because they are the opposite suit from cracks. Okay. Um, again, please remember, like I said, the, the D's, you know, just because they're in red, uh, does not mean that it requires red dragons, okay? Very, very, very important. It just has to be any opposite dragon from the suit that you use for the numbers. Okay. Um, the third consecutive run hand, it's a pair of flowers and any three consecutive numbers, you can do it in one suit, or three suits, okay? So let's just see if we can switch this up. I'm gonna make it in three suits. So we've got fives. We'll have sixes, a couple, throw up a couple of jokers. Okay, we're making this hand right here. Five, six, my third number is seven. What suit does the, do the sevens have to be in? I've got cracks, I've got bams. My third suit are dots. If you said dots, give yourself a star. Okay, so there's that hand. Any three suits, 
with a pair of flowers. You can do it in one suit or three suits. Okay. And again, if I'm you, I'm gonna to try to have at least one of those flowers by the end of the Charleston, because we know how difficult it can be to get pairs. Okay. And please remember, if you're playing a hand with pairs, and let's just take that particular hand that I just put down, but you know, let's say you have one flower in your hand and the hand requires a pair of flowers and someone discards a flower, you cannot call it. You cannot expose a pair. You cannot expose a single tile. You cannot expose a pair, okay? So if you call that flower and put up a pair, your hand's going to be declared dead. You cannot do that. You have to have at least a, three like tiles before you can start making exposures. Okay. All right, let's go to the next hand. All right, this hand is any two suits, any three consecutive numbers. So six, seven, and I'll use eight with a joker, okay? And then six, seven, eight in a second suit. Okay, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight. Okay. This is a 30 cent hand because you've got two single tiles and two pairs. So I definitely want to have those after the Charleston because singles and pairs, I know I'm being redundant, but they're, they're difficult to get. Okay. You cannot use a joker here, 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 here. As many as you want here and here. All right, let's go to the next hand. All right. Any four consecutive numbers with matching dragons. I'm just going to leave this up here, six, seven, eight, it's four consecutive numbers. So I need to have some nine vams. Matching dragon, what's the matching dragon to vams? It is green, okay. it's the green dragon. Okay. And that's, that's that hand. If I had done this in cracks, those would be red dragons. If I did this in dots, those would be the white dragon, also known as soap. So again, try to secure those pairs because they can be tricky. So try to have them after the Charleston. And again, this is another example of why you need to know your matching dragons. Next hand, this is our second hand with a quint of flowers. Now, and this gets asked often, Lynn, can I use jokers with flower? Absolutely, as long as you have a Pong Kong or quint of any like tile, you can use as many jokers as you want, okay? So we've got a quint of flowers, and then it says, any three suits, which we know because it's three colors, any four consecutive numbers, okay? So I'm going to, since it's close by, I'm going to use six, seven, eight, okay? And then these pongs have to be in the fourth number. What's my fourth number? Nine. So I need nines in the opposite suit. So my nines cannot use dots. I have dots here, I have bams here. What's the third suit? Cracks. Okay, three suits, dots, bams, and cracks. Okay, so instead of one, two, three, four, four, I use six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Four, any four consecutive numbers. This is a 30 cent ham. Um, 
Please remember that these first three numbers in the run are considered single tiles. You cannot use jokers. You cannot call for that. You cannot expose that. If someone, you know, throws a seven dot, you can't say call and put it on your rack. The only exception is, is if it's your 14th tile and it gives you mahjong, okay? So in other words, let's say you have all of this in your rack or even part of it exposed and all you're waiting for is the seven dot, the seven dot, and someone discards the seven dot, Mahjong, then you could call it, put it on your rack, and display your hand. Okay, let's go to the next hand in consecutive run. You can do this hand in one suit or two suits. Any four consecutive numbers, okay? Any four consecutive numbers. We'll go ahead and we're gonna leave those nine cracks up there. We're gonna make this hand in two suits. Uh, I believe this is yet another hand that is our familiar Pung Pung Kong Kong, okay? So let's see, we're gonna do six, seven, eight, nine. So let's grab some sixes. Six, seven, I'll throw a joker up there. Six, seven, eight, nine. I did it in two suits. Okay. Now, it just so happens that I pulled the bams and cracks, but again, I'm gonna mention the colors mean nothing. It has nothing to do with you know designating the suit as bams and cracks. It's any two suits. This could have been dots, you know, and this could have been bams, okay? So, like I had mentioned before, this is, again, our Ever friendly uh, Pung Pung Kong Kong combination. This is a great hand for beginners to play because you can call everything. Last hand in consecutive run. Any three suits, any three consecutive numbers. Okay. So let's just leave our six seven up there. We have to do another six seven in a separate suit. So I uh, will get some, eh, we'll just do it in cracks. Six, seven, okay. We've got six, seven, six, seven. What is our third number? Our third number is eight. And what is our third suit? Dots, okay. So I've got three suits, bams, cracks, and dots. Three consecutive numbers, six, seven, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I like to show you the hand different than what they show on the card because, you know, if I just show you, you know, one, two, one, two, three, it's just copying the card. I wanna show you how different combinations can be made on these hands, okay? Now, my notes on regarding Uh, the consecutive run uh, area. You know, when we play on a new card, we have to be very careful before calling for an exposure because we are dealing with new patterns. So just take your time and double check before you call the tile to make an exposure on your rack. And what I mean by that is, you know, let's say you were playing this hand up here that required three sixes or required a, you know, a pung of any number. But let's say you were using sixes and you exposed it as a kong of sixes rather than a pung of sixes. You know, you'd have to look for another hand. So that's why I'm saying, be careful before you call for an exposure. There are lots of options this year with consecutive runs. Um, these are usually popular with beginners since they are easy to organize and recognize during the Charleston. You know, when you set your tiles up during the Charleston, be sure to set them your tiles up by suit with matching dragons at the end of each respective suit. So let's say, you know, I got some, uh, you know, sixes in 
uh, during the Charleston, and if I pulled a red, I would put it right at the end. And then let's say, you know, if I got an eight in during the Charleston, I would put my matching dragon next to it. It helps you to find um, hands when you set your tiles up. I usually put my flowers over here because as you notice on the card, the flowers are always to the left-hand side. Um, so, you know, always try to set your hand up also, like in, you know, consecutive order, you know, two, four, six. Um, you know, if I, if I happen to have gotten, you know, like a four, I put the four here, four if I got the five, because hands will pop out at you. So that's just a, you know, a helpful hint when you're putting your hands together, or your tiles together during the Charleston. Also, this comes up sometimes in, in some classes that I teach. Someone will inevitably ask me in consecutive runs if you can start with zero. The answer to that is no. The lowest number we go is one. So in other words, you could not start a consecutive run like zero and then, you know, say one, you know, and then two, three, you couldn't have, you, you can't do that, okay? The lowest you can go starting a consecutive hand is one. I just wanted to mention that. All right, let's now go to our odds category, one, three, five, seven, nine. The first hand, again, we had it last year. It's just that it's a different um, pattern this year. Again, I think we had the pairs at the end, now we have pongs at the end. So we can make it in one suit or three suits. Let's make it in three suits, okay? So we've got a pong of ones. Then we have a pair of threes, okay? That's in one suit. Then we need fives in a second suit. So I think I'll grab my dots here. joker in that column and then we have seven nine in a different color which means that has to be in our third suit our third suit is what bams give yourself a hand if you said bams okay so there you have it that's that ham one three five seven nine in three different suits um like I said, this is a very similar pattern to last year's um, hand, but it's just been tweaked a little bit. Okay. So just be careful again when you call for exposures. You know, I remember last year, I think these, these sevens were a calm. So, you know, just be careful. Check the hand really carefully. You know, when we start playing on a new card, you want to take your time. Speed should not be a factor. The only time speed is a factor is when you play in a tournament, okay? So just take your time, and before you call a tile for an exposure, make sure you're calling the correct number of tiles. The next hand, ooh, here we are again. Pung Kong, Pung Kong. So let's just add some tiles here. We need three ones, oopsies. Three ones, three threes. I'm going to keep this pong of fives here. And now we need a pong of three dots. Pong, pong, kong, kong. Love, love, love these nice, easy hands to play as long as you get the tiles. Okay. That's that first hand. One, three, three, five, two suits. You could also play it five, seven, seven, nine. You know, there's, again, there's no singles or pairs here. So that's why it's a very callable hand. Okay, let's go to the third hand. All right, what do we see? We got one color, right? One color equals one suit. So let's just, um, let's leave these up here. We need a pair of flowers, a pair of ones, a pong of threes. We need a pong of fives. 
let's put some jokers in here. Okay. Matching dragons. What's the dragon that goes with our crafts? Reds. Roja. Okay. There's that hand. No jokers, no jokers. As many jokers as you want. Okay. You can make this hand one, three, five, or five, seven, nine. Um, this is very similar to last year's hand, but with a pattern change. So just be careful again when calling for an exposure. Okay. Next hand. Aha, three colors, three suits. Goodbye flowers for now. So we've got one, three, five, all in one suit. And then we need sevens in a second suit. What are our nines going to be in? The third suit is BAMS. Okay. So this is a 30 cent hand, right? You've got three sets of pairs and that's why it's a 30 cent hand. Just be mindful with this hand that it requires three suits, okay? Sometimes I think, you know, and I've done this where I, I'm thinking of this hand up here and I match it. I would be declared dead if I went Mahjong and people went to confirm my hand and noticed that I had this in the same suit. <laughs> Too bad. Okay, let's go to multiplication again. Like I said, not my favorite hands to play, but if I get these tiles in, I'll play it. All right, so let's just leave this up here. Now, this hand has to be played in how many suits? Three. So, I'll use three cracks, and then I will use five bams. Three times five equals 15. That 15 has to be in my third suit. My third suit is, did you guess dots? If you did, you're right, okay? Kong of flowers, three times five equals 15. You can also do this hand, five times seven equals 35 in three different suits. The only thing that I'm gonna mention in this hand, be mindful of the pair. Again, no jokers, and you cannot call it for an exposure. You can call a tile for Mahjong if it's your 14th tile, but you could never call this for an exposure. Okay, next hand. Do not need flowers. We do need ones and threes, so we'll pick those ones back up. We've got one, three pairs, and then we need a pong of threes, a pung of fives I'll use because we have to make this in three suits. So I have cracks, I have bams. What are those D's going to be? Did you say white dragon or soaps? You're right, very good. Okay, there's that hand. No jokers, no jokers, as many as you want. Good. Last hand in 13579. Okay, you can make this hand with either the 135s or the 579s. It is a concealed hand. So please be careful. 13579. With what tiles you call. So I'm going to do 13. Hello, Joker. 5. And then those have to be threes. The, it doesn't say, well, it actually says these numbers only. What I was gonna say is that those pungs could be either one, three, five, sevens, or nines, but no, it doesn't. It has to be those numbers. So I have to have threes in the other two suits, okay? So I've got my 
one, three, five in cracks. My pumps of threes have to be in the other two suits. So I've got bams and dots. Okay. Um, let me see. So this is a concealed hand with a high level of difficulty. Um, even though you only need one pair, you will need two sets of like pungs in the second and third suit that matches your pair, depending on which hand you play. So, you know, in this hand, the pair is threes, so these pungs are threes. If this, you're playing this hand and that pair are sevens, then these would have to be sevens. So that's a lot of like numbered tiles. So that's, that's going to be a very difficult hand in my opinion. Um, I've noticed on this year's card that, re, that, that sevens are required in a, quite a bit of hands. So again, be mindful of passing sevens in the Charleston. You know, you might not need them, but your opponent may need them. Okay, Winds and Dragons. I'm not even going to take the time to make this hand because, I, you know, it's very obvious that you need four Norths, three East, three West, or four Souths, or in this combination. Again, please be careful, you know, when you make an exposure, okay? Let's say you're playing this hand and you have already exposed four Norths. And then you call for an exposure and you expose four Easts. Now you cannot make that hand. There's no hand on the card that has four Norths and four Easts. Your hand would be declared dead. So just be careful. The next hand, you've got four flowers. You know, this is the year of the dragon. So, you know, we all were happy when the league came back with the, with the dragon hand. So again, the colors mean nothing. All the colors are telling you is that you need three different suits, okay? So, you've got your Kong of Flowers. There's two pungs of dragons required, so I've used soaps and reds, and then a Kong of the third dragon. My third dragon was green. Okay. So my three suits are represented. Dots, bams, and cracks. Those are the only dragons in the game of Maja. Okay. So again, at the end of the Charleston, if you have a lot of dragons, man, that is the hand to play, without a doubt. So as I mentioned to you before, there are those of us who are jumping for joy that the league brought back the multi-dragon hand. Um, so we're thrilled. I, I like to be a dragon lady sometimes. <laughs> and from what I understand, the year of the dragon is supposed to bring success and prosperity. Let's hope that prosperity is in the form of jokers this year, right? Okay, third hand in Winds and Dragons. First of all, you can make it in North and South or East and West. You can't change that, okay? You can't have North and East or South and West. It has to be exactly as it appears. So we'll make that first hand. Let's say we're making it with North. We can throw some jokers in, North and South any two suits, any two consecutive numbers. Well, the threes are in front of me, so I'm gonna use three. What's my next number have to be? Four in a different suit. So let's just use four dots, okay? So north, south, and I change it up again because I feel it's a better teaching tool if I show you something different than what's reflected on the card. And since it says any two consecutive numbers, I use three, four, two separate suits. Okay. Let me check my notes on this hand so I can give you any, any other additional information. Um, 
all I have put, well, this is another Pung Pung Kong Kong, so nice callable hand. I'm predicting that this, th these are going to be popular hands to play since you can call for everything. Just remember that your numbers have to be consecutive and in two different suits. Say goodbye to the winds. Next hand. Not going to take the time to make it. It's a pair of flowers. It's a pair of Norse. It's a Pong of East, a Pong of West, and a Kong of South. Okay. The only thing you can't call for in this hand are the flowers and the Norse because those are pairs and you cannot use jokers. Okay. Again, the only time you could call is if it makes your mahjong. Let's say the only thing you're waiting for is a flower and someone discards a flower. Mahjong. Okay. Next hand. This is a 30 center because we have three pairs. Okay. It can be done in north-south. Have you noticed how the league always puts together like the north and the south and the east and the west? So that's something that you, you should remember that you know, in, in, a, in a lot of times you're not going to have hands where like Norse are required and West are required. It's usually North, South, and East and West. Okay, so I've got the Joker here and some Norse. And then the league says it's any three consecutive numbers. I'm not gonna use the one, two, three. I wanna show it to you differently. So we're going to use three, four, five. Okay. Three consecutive numbers, north and south. Um, I would certainly try to secure the majority of these pairs up front before playing this hand. Those pairs can be difficult to get. Okay, let's put this back and move to the next hand. More dragons. I love it. Let's just keep, um, well, we just need one. This is our second and final news hand, okay? And why do we call it news? Because that's what it spells out. North, east, west, and south. We need a pair of flowers. We need any dragon. Again, I'm gonna mention that just because it's green does not mean that it requires a green dragon. If they wanted a green dragon, it would be G's there, okay? So we need a Kong of dragons and a second dragon. So we'll just use greens here, okay? So again, this could be cracks, right? This could be uh, greens and reds. This could be reds and white or so as it's more familiarly known as, okay? So with this particular hand, um, again, I'm going to mention no jokers. This is not a con. These are single tiles. They don't match, okay? So please remember that. If you're playing this hand, okay? And let's say someone discards a north and you go call and you discard this meld like that, your hand's going to be declared dead. You cannot call it. Now, if you're sitting and waiting for Mahjong and all you need is a South and someone discards a South Mahjong, then you can call it for Mahjong. You just can't call it for an exposure, okay? All right, last hand in News and Dragons. It's concealed, okay. We have three Norse. We have an East and a West. We have a Pung of South. And then we have any like number. The key word is like. They have to match, but in different suits, okay? So I chose my number to be three because that's just what I ended up with in the Charleston. I ended up with a bunch of threes, okay? 
north, east, west, south, any two suits, any like numbers. I have threes and bams and dots. These could have been cracks, whatever, okay? Just remember, this is a concealed hand. You, this is a, you, you cannot call for this east or west because those are single tiles and no jokers. As many jokers as you want here, here, here. You know, because we have so many pattern changes with a new card, when someone declares Mahjong, before you do something like that, you know, toss your tiles on the table, be sure to check that they did in fact make an accurate Mahjong. Um, you know, I often have beginners ask me if they can use a joker as a single or in a pair, if it gives them Mahjong, and the answer is an absolute no. You can never use a joker as a single tile or in a pair. This includes news and the 2024 combination. You know, um, where did we have the, uh, we had news here and in 2024. Even if, 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 if you have a joker uh, at the end of the game or whatever, you can never use a joker here. Ever, ever, ever. I, I hope I've made that clear. All right, let's go on to 369. Okay, so the first hand, now needless to say in this category, all of these hands are going to have three sixes and nines. So, you know, during the Charleston, if you accumulate a lot of three sixes and nines, look in this category. I kind of play this category in conjunction with one, three, five, seven, nine, because I, you know, both categories have threes and nines. So just keep that in mind. All right, the first hand is two suits. The second hand is three suits. This is our friendly Pong Pong Kong Kong again, three, three, four, four. Let's make this hand in three suits. So threes, and then we have sixes. I use a joker. And then it has to be a second suit. So let's use bams. Three, six, six, nine. Pong Pong Kong Kong. Oops, I meant to say, okay, well, this is the first hand. I wanna make it in three suits. So what's my third suit? Let me hear, cracks, yay, you're right. And we'll throw a joker up here and one more joker. So that's that hand, three six in one suit, that Kong of sixes in a second suit, the nines in a third suit. Okay, let's go to the second hand. What do we have? Oh, let's see if I had any notes on that first hand. Oh, not just that it's a nice, easy hand if you get those tiles because it's the Pung Pung Kong Kong. Okay, second hand in three, six, nine. We're gonna take a pair of flowers and then we have a three, six, nine in one suit. So I'll use cracks as long as I can find some six cracks here. There we go. And I can use a joker here. And then this is what the card says. Pongs, three sixes or nines, but they have to be like pongs. What does that mean? That means they have to match in the same number. So these pongs can be all threes, all sixes, or all nines. I'm gonna show you the example. Let's use sixes for the pongs, okay? They have to be in the other two suits, but in the same number. So I've got cracks here. These are bams. My third suit is dots. Matching pungs, like pungs, either in three, sixes, or nines. I have a feeling that some people are going to mess up on this hand in that they're going to forget that these have to match, that they're gonna do something like this. They're gonna put um, th like uh, threes up here. This does not match, okay? You see how these threes match, these pungs match? That's what it has to be. They have to match in either all threes, all sixes, or all nines. 
So in other words, if I put up with the threes, three dots, that's a legitimate hand now, okay? I could also do this in nines, okay? Then these would be nine bams, okay? So just remember, the pungs have to match in the same number. Very, very, very important. Um, you know, I would also try to have at least one flower, okay? Um, and, you know, that's a single tile and that's a pair. Before I play this hand, I would want to have a good majority of this portion of the hand. Okay, let's go to the next hand. Okay. You can either make this hand in one suit or three suits. Okay, three, six, nine. So a pair of flowers. Let's do it this way. We'll have three cracks here. I'm starting to use a lot more jokers because my tiles are getting a bit scattered about. Okay, so that hand, you can either make it in one suit or three suits. I've done it in three. Okay, cracks, bams, and dots. As far as this hand goes, um, Again, this, I, oh, my comment to this hand is that it should be called the King of Kongs because <laughs> you got Kong, Kong, Kong. Again, try to have one fl flower by the end of the Charleston. Okay, wow, we're moving right along, aren't we? Here in sunny Bonita Springs, Florida. I should say that my husband and I just relocated from Vermont. We sold our home in Vermont and we are now full-time residents of Estero, Florida. So I, I do this video at my best friend's house because her husband is so good with video equipment uh, and I can't thank them enough. Okay, let's go, uh, and they live in Bonita Springs, so that's why I'm uh, here from Estero, which is right next door. All right, let's go to the next hand in 369. This is a very, very interesting hand. Any two suits, pungs, threes, sixes, or nine with matching dragons. So in other words, these pungs can either be matching threes, sixes, or nines. You can't have threes and nines, they have to match. So let's build it in sixes. Okay. Again, I don't like to copy the card. So we're gonna do those pungs in sixes. So what do my dragons need to be? Dots are, yep, you're right, the soap. And my bams are green. <clears throat> okay. There you go. That's that hand. So again, these could be matching threes, sixes, or nines. If you have something like this for this hand, you're dead. You can't have threes and sixes, okay? You'd be dead anyway, because that's this isn't the matching dragon to those three cracks. <laughs> but let's just say, you know, you did that. You had threes and sixes. That's a dead hand, all right? Okay, let me check my notes. Okay, I think I have covered everything that I wanted to in that hand. Let's go to the next one. Oh, this is a 30 cent hand. So this is kind of an interesting hand. You see how the threes and nines match? What does that tell you? That the threes and nines have to be in the same suit, okay? So I've chosen dots for my threes and nines. The middle numbers have to be sixes in the other three suits. What are our three suits? Cracks, bams, and dots. Okay? Cracks, bams, and dots. Those are your three suits. Has to be sixes. This is a difficult hand. Those three pairs are going to be tough. So, you know, the, what I want to 
you know, really, really kind of, you know, uh, stress is that you need to be sure that the Kongs of threes and nines match, okay? And I'm gonna mention this again for beginners that you cannot call for an exposure on these pairs, okay? The only exception is, is if it's your 14th tile for Mahjong. So if you've got everything else in this hand and someone throws a six dot, then you say call, and then you can make the ex you know, exposure for Mahjong. Okay. All right, let's see. This hand requires, again, you really gotta know your opposite dragons this year. Got to. And this is another hand that's requiring opposite dragons. So we've got a Kong of Flowers. We've got 369. Well, I'm only using BAMs because I just see it close to me, okay? Even though it's green, I could use cracks or I could have used dots, but these were close by, okay? Now, any opposite dragon. So what is opposite? My dots are opposite from BAMs and so are my reds. So this hand could have been made with the red dragon or with the white dragon or soaps because we use BAMs for the 369. Okay. Study those dragons is my recommendation this year. Year of the Dragon. Last hand in 369, it's concealed, okay? It's a concealed hand, so higher level of difficulty. Uh, let's see. So we want three, six. Hello, six cracks. There's another one, and there's another one. Okay, so we've got Pung Pung, and then we've got Pung Pung, three, six in dots. What's our third suit? Bams. So that pair of nines will have to be in bams. Okay. Three, six, three, six, nine. Okay. Concealed hand, have a good, you know, have at least one of those nines if, if, if I was playing this hand. Again, be sure not to call for any exposures. It's a concealed hand. The only time that you can call for a tile on a concealed hand is if it is your 14th tile and gives you Mahjong. Okay. So, um, singles and pairs. I know a lot of beginners are kind of intimidated by singles and pairs because listen, they are the highest level of difficulty. Look at the values, 50 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents. You know, don't be frightened. I'm going to point out to you other hands that you can play if by chance, like you start pulling in jokers if you're playing in singles and pairs. Because you know, all these singles and pairs, there's no jokers allowed. So that first singles and pair hand is two, two. Now this is probably gonna take me a while, so I apologize because our tiles did get uh, kind of mixed up, but let's say I do two, two, and then four, six, and then eight, eight, and cracks, okay? And then the next part has to be in a second suit. So let's use BAMs. So two, 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 four, six, eight, eight. All right. So let's say you're playing, playing this hand because during the Charleston, you ended up with a lot of these tiles, but all of a sudden you started pulling in jokers. Okay. We have a category for every single singles and pairs hand, a corresponding category. So if you start pulling in jokers, come over here, come over to your two, four, six, eight category and find a comparable hand, okay? Here's a hand here that's got two different suits, 
So that's what I'm going to suggest to you when you play these singles and pairs. If you start pulling in jokers, switch out to the comparable category. Right? Same with the singles and pairs in um, with this one, three, five, five, seven, nine hand. You need a pair of flowers, okay? Let's say we'll use ones, threes, ones, and threes, and fives for the first part of that hand. And then the second part, five, seven, nine, has to be in a second suit. Five, well, I'll grab the nines while I see them. Nine, and here are my sevens, okay? So, you're playing this hand and you start pulling in jokers. We have a whole category over here, one, three, five, seven, nine. Just switch out to that category. Now, what I wanna point out about these next, this next uh, set of hands, it has to be those numbers, okay? It has to be the one, one, two, one, one, two, two, three, or the nine, nine, eight, blah, 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 blah. So if you get a lot of those numbers during the Charleston, please, please look in this category, okay? If by chance you start getting jokers, okay, what category are you gonna go to? Consecutive run, okay? You already have consecutive numbers here, right? So if you start pulling in jokers, go to a hand in consecutive runs. I'll go ahead and make this next. You know, the, these hands here, I'm not making because it's those numbers only in three suits. It's spelled right out, okay? The next hand, three, six, nine. I bet you're already thinking ahead about what category you can play in for this particular hand, right? Three, six, flower, flower, three, six, nine. And then we have to make it in two more suits. And I know I'm missing my flowers. I hear you all going, oh, she forgot to put the flowers on the red. <laughs> okay, we've got cracks, we've got bams. What's our third suit? Dots, you are correct again, wow. You're doing good. You're listening to me. <laughs> I can hear you all the way here in South Florida. Pair of flowers, three, six, nines in pairs in one suit, three, six, nine in a second suit, three, six, nine in a third suit, okay? Again, this is so obvious. If you start getting in jokers, just come up here. Look at all these hands we have in three, six, nines. Okay. All right, let's put this next hand together. This is an interesting hand. Again, here are the dragon. We have another hand with dragons. Any five consecutive numbers, okay, in any suit, all right? So let's just say I'm gonna use bams because I caught them out of the corner of my eye here. So we're gonna start with two, three, and it's gonna go up to, let's see, two, three, four, five, six. Those are going to be my consecutive numbers. Okay, and I need a four. Somebody help me find a four bam. There we go. Two, three, four, five, and I have it in bams with opposite dragons. What are my two other suits? My other two suits are cracks, which require the red dragon, and dots, which require the white dragon, okay? So any five consecutive numbers, opposite dragons. Now, if I'm playing that hand and I start pulling in jokers, again, I'm switching to consecutive run because I already have consecutive numbers. And look, there's even a hand here with four consecutive numbers that, now that requires matching dragon, so be careful. This consecutive run up here requires opposite dragon, so I would probably play that hand in conjunction with this hand. The last hand, what's often referred to as the big hand of Maz, 
I have to tell you, I think this hand is wonderful this year. You know, I think that it's going to be played quite a lot because I, it's my opinion that the league has made it a bit easier for us, which is nice. So you've got a 2024 in any suit, and then you have winds, north, we've got to have a east and a west. We have to have two norths. Remember, there's no, no jokers allowed. These are singles and pair hands. No jokers. I can't stress that enough. And we need another south. Do, 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 do. Where did my south go? Hello, where are you? Well, I would sing for a commercial interruption, but I have a terrible voice there. I found my south. And then they want another 2024 in a second suit. So I see my twos here and a four crack. That is this year's big hand. It's 75 cents, okay? And instead of having to make three 2024s, in other words, in, in all three suits, this year we just have to do it in two suits and with the wins. And what I like about this, and if you've played Mahjong for a little bit, you'll notice that sometimes the wins will go around in the Charleston because no one is playing them. Well, I can guarantee you that if I open in the Charleston with two soaps and a couple twos and fours and the winds are going around, I'm going to snag those winds and play that big hand. I guarantee you that. So, and please, you know, don't shy away from singles and pairs. Like I said before, if you start getting jokers, just switch to the corresponding category. So, um, you know, singles and pairs have the highest degree of difficulty because they are concealed and because you can't use jokers. But this fact should not dissuade you from playing these hands. Always remember that if you are playing in the singles and pair category, there is a similar hand in a corresponding category on the card. I've already shown you that. So if you start pulling in those nice jokers that we all love, switch out to the comparable grouping on the card. So there you have it. I've made every single hand on the card this year. Um, I do have some miscellaneous notes that I'm going to go through, okay? Um, so we wanna check your, our hands carefully before committing to an exposure. The patterns have changed on the new card, so you wanna be sure you are exposing the correct number of tiles. There are a total of 73 hands on this year's card. There are two hands that have the 2024. It's number four in the 2024 category, and it's number six in the singles and a pair, the big hand that we just went over, okay? Those are the only two hands that have 2024. And I just wanna point out again, those are concealed hands. Okay, so be careful with concealed hands. There are two hands that have news. The number three hand in like numbers and the number six hand in winds and dragons. If someone exposes a pung of flowers, okay, three flowers and a quint of dragons, let me just set it up here for you. If someone exposes something like that, declare their hand dead. There's no such hand on this year's card. There are two hands with a quint of flowers. That's five flowers. That's number four in quince and number six in consecutive run. There are six hands with kongs of flowers. Number two in the 2024 category, number four in the 2468 category, number one in any like numbers, number five in the 13579 category, number two in Winds and Dragons, and number six in 369. 
Why do I point this out? Because if someone exposes a Kong of flowers, and especially if they make a second exposure, you have a much better chance of figuring out what hand they are playing. During the Charleston, avoid passing like numbers and pairs. I, I believe 44% of the hands on this year's card require like numbers, okay? So just keep that in mind. Remember, we had like numbers here. We had like numbers up here, a whole category. Twos and fours are hot commodities since we have a category devoted to 2024. And the last hand in singles and pairs also has the 2024. So you try not to pass tiles that are considered hot commodities, okay? You know, I'm gonna go ahead and put them up on my rack, what we consider hot commodities this year, like twos are hot, three, uh, not threes, fours are hot because we're in the 2024. The white dragon is hot, again, because it has dual purpose. You know, any of your other dragons, because look at how many dragons are on this year's card, okay? So flowers, dragons, and year tiles are considered risky tiles to pass in the Charleston. Are you going to have to pass them? Absolutely, I pass them all the time. But if you have the choice, try not to pass these. Another thing I wanna mention, discard your riskier tiles early on in play. So when the game begins, like let's say, you know, you've selected your hand and you know you don't need a flower or a white or red, discard them at the beginning because the longer you hold on to those risky tiles, there's a much higher chance that you're giving your opponents uh, the opportunity to gather tiles to make their hands. And so later on the game, you could actually be throwing them their Mahjong tiles. So risky tiles, get rid of them as quickly as possible. You know, as I've mentioned before, flowers are dangerous to pass during the Charleston, especially since there are 42% uh, of the hands on this year's card have flowers. So get, as soon as you know that you do not need flowers for your hand, discard them immediately, okay? You want to pass a wind tile uh, in the Charleston before a dragon, since there are 19 hands, that's 26%, that require dragons on this year's card. So again, if during the Charleston, you need to pick be between a wind and a dragon, uh, to pass, pass the wind. Okay. Uh, before committing to a hand, try to have your single and our pair tiles. We know how difficult it is to get our singles and pairs. Once again, I'm gonna mention that you can use as many, uh, uh, as use any number of jokers in a Pong, Kong, and Quint. You know, let's say you're playing a hand and that uh, needs, like, let's just say three, four cracks. You could actually have three jokers for those three, four cracks, okay? Same goes for a Kong or Quint. They can all be jokers. You'd be so lucky to get that many jokers, huh? So the soap or white dragon is always the most dangerous dragon to pass in the Charleston because it has dual purpose. Remember, it's the only tile that acts as zero with any suit, and it's also the matching dragon to dots. Remember that the safest tile that you can discard in Mahjong is a joker because no one can call a joker. This is especially important toward the end of the game. When you know that you are not going to be able to make your hand, the safest tile to throw is a joker. A lot of beginners have a difficult time with this concept because they don't want to get rid of their jokers. But when you look at the number of tiles that are left to play and you realize there are not enough tiles that you're going to make your mahjong, the safest tile to throw is a joker because no one can call a joker. I can't say that enough. Throw a joker when you know you cannot make your hand, okay? Be sure to check the new card carefully before committing to your first exposure. You don't wanna claim a discard for an exposure on a concealed hand. 
or worse yet, play a hand from a previous year. I was playing the other day and someone um, was declared Mahjong and we didn't recognize the hand and it turned out she was playing with the 2023 card. So just be careful when you make an exposure and just make sure that you're not making an exposure on a concealed hand also. When another player declares Mahjong, it is extremely important that you verify that it is in fact an accurate Mahjong. When we play on a new card, mistakes are common because we are accustomed to playing on the old card. Before you toss your tiles in, be sure to check that your opponents have in fact made a valid Mahjong. You know, it's also a great learning tool, I just want to mention this, that when checking someone's Mahjong, then if in fact it is a good Mahjong, it's a good way for you to learn about all the new hands on the new card. If you are playing a hand that requires a single or a pair, be sure to watch the tiles that are discarded. If you discover that your tiles have already been discarded and you will be unable to complete the single or pair required, try to switch to another hand. If that is not possible, simply play defensively. Remember that the safest tile to discard in Mahjong is a joker. No one can call a joker. So let me give you an example, okay? Let's say you're playing the second hand in 2024, and you're playing the 24, you're, it has to be BAMs. That's how your hand your, uh, is being played. That two and a four need to be BAMs. You know you cannot use a joker. All of a sudden, you look out in the tiles that have been discarded, and you realize that there are four two BAMs on the table. You know you're not gonna be able to make that tile. So you either switch to another hand, or you play defensively and just discard jokers if you have them, or just your safest tiles. Um, and finally, you know, the league has once again placed the concealed hands as the last row in each section of the card. Some beginners like to highlight all of the concealed hands as a reminder that they are in fact concealed and to be mindful that exposure cannot be called for, unless of course it's your Mahjong tile. I know that it always feels a bit intimidating at first when we get a new card. So my recommendation is always to play, play, play. This allows you to get familiar with the new hands and patterns. I've listed websites on my written notes that you can go on to play with the bots, AKA robots, and you can play at your own pace. I also recommend that you make each hand on the card by physically building each hand like I just did with tiles from your Mahjong set. Um, I, I really hope that uh, this evaluation of the 2024 card proves to be helpful. I know that new cards can be daunting at first, but just be patient. It does take time and practice to feel comfortable playing the new hands but I promise you that each time you play, it will get better, okay? I will remind you once again that you can email me at lynnkaplan38 at gmail.com to request a copy of my written notes. That's L-Y-N-N-K-A-P-L-A-N-3-8 at gmail.com. So enjoy, have fun, and as always, I hope that your life is filled with love and your Maj hands are filled with jokers. Good luck.